morning, you're watching NBS Sport, where we champion Ugandan sport 24-7. My name is Munira Bax. Excitement because we are heading into the final leg of a celebration. One of the biggest events on the golfing calendar is coming to an end, and that tees off tomorrow with, of course, the professionals when they hit the course to compete for 150 million pass. All the big guns when it comes to pro golf are in the country. I'm talking about Ndiza. He's around and of course two-time winner Robson Chinoy and of course Uganda's Ronald Rugumayo. And joining me in studio to expound on this is of course the chairman of the Uganda Professional Golfers Association, Deo Akope, at the extreme end. Mr. Deo, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. And Thank of course, so right next to me, I do have the Emeritus President of the Uganda Golf Union, Masiko Moses. Good morning, Moses. Good morning to you, and thank you for inviting us here. Well, once a president, always a president, so we refer to you as Mr. President. Thank Interestingly, you. both of you are Arsenal fans. You know, people think if you're <coughs> golfers, you don't have any other sports that you pay attention to. Uh, do you think you're taking the trophy this season? Any hopes? I think so. I mean, yes, last year was very close, and I think we were learning from the past. Mm. Yeah. He doesn't it's seem too confident. Weekend. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. <laughs> For now, mm. everything suggests that we'll take the trophy. Oh, wow. We wait to see who's ready to challenge us, but uh, we're hopeful. <laughs> I love the confidence. Well, now back to the game of golf. We're excited. The amateurs just concluded. There's a brand new winner. The first time that Lugazi Hills is seeing a winner, a young boy. What are your sentiments before we go into the professional golf? I'll start with Deo. What do you think about the recent concluded amateur open? <coughs> <coughs> After the event, uh, I had a discussion with a few people there, and I, it dates back I, probably three, four, five years ago. Uh, I looked at the trend of uh, uh, golf in Uganda, club by club. During our time, it, w it used to be Entebbe and, uh, and Jinja. The commission was between the two clubs. And then there comes in uh, Fort Porto there after. All the champions started coming from Fort Porto. But I told them, I told somebody that watch two clubs, uh, Lugazi and Namulonge. And the reason I said that was there are lots of kids who live around these golf courses and the <coughs> courses have actually given them free access to the courses. They can practice any other day. They can get into the course anytime they wish to play. And that alone is a motivation to the young the youngsters who are able to, to play the game of golf. And you can see it is actually shifting to, to Lugazi now because in Subuga Won, who is also from Lugazi, and now we have Akena Regan from Lugazi. So these kids have now grown and they are maturing in the game of golf. So there is still a lot to come from that same club we are talking about. Mm. Now, during your time, Moses, you are mm. so big on junior level golf. This must make you such a proud man, seeing what happened in the amateur open. Yes, um, <coughs> that is uh, correct. I'm a very proud man for so many reasons, uh, but among them is what just happened. Because as you heard from the chairman uh, of the professionals, it was at the time right when I was in the position of uh, manager, national team, <coughs> and then to the presidency that we embarked on junior development. We were very specific and we made that cautious decision to focus on the juniors. And as he said, um, the, it's paying off. So I am not just happy, but I'm seeing the works of myself, of my team, of clubs paying off. So it's a concept that, you know, uh, without exception has worked and it's a good story to tell moving forward. Now, what's more interesting, uh, first correction of the fact that Nsuvuga was the first kid to win from Lugazi uh, last year when Uganda opened, but exceptionally, you know, Akena is 19 years old. He's the youngest Ugandan ever to win the Open. <coughs> so it's, we're seeing more records being set. We're seeing more things happening. We're seeing better scores. We're seeing the numbers growing. Uh, and that's, that's good news. And the best of it is that when you look at this year's Uganda Open and last year's, you see an increase of Ugandans from 1 to 10. For instance, from number one up to position one up to sixth, mm -hmm. fifth, was Ugandans. Yeah. So it's, it's a better story, not that the other countries, because uh, Kenyans were here 
uh, East Africa's uh, big numbers were here. Uh, Rwanda was here, it had some good players. Burundi was here, and many other countries. But we see Ugandans playing out on a course that was set in very tough conditions, uh, tactfully, not, not, uh, not in terms of, uh, of, of the course itself. The course was fantastic. But the kids were able to come through, and I think that that speaks a big statement <coughs> to the Ugandan uh, uh, status on, on golf. Mm -hmm. Yes, Do so we're proud. Wonderful. Though you have experience in being a pro golfer, if you were to say some magic words to this <coughs> young boy uh, on if he wanted to turn pro one day, what would you say to Akena? I've played, personally, I've played golf with Akena. Uh, and we, we've had uh, talks about the game of golf itself and what he, he thinks about himself, his future of the game. But, uh, of course, one thing I told him was, he should not rush to turn pro. Yes, he's 19. If I were him, I would give myself maybe another two years, play on the national team, uh, have enough exposure. Because when you're playing on the national team, you have a chance to, to play lots of competitions out there representing your country. And that alone gives you more resilience in the game of golf. I mean, you learn a lot from playing with different uh, good players, not just locally, but also internationally. Then after that, um, in another two, three years, I wouldn't stop him from turning pro because he would have really, you know, matured in a game of golf. Mm -hmm. And as well, you were the last Ugandan to win the professional Open back in 2014. In your opinion, <coughs> why do you think it has taken us so long since then to have another Ugandan winner? I know uh, the golfers out there might not agree with me, but uh, professional golf is all about competition. And I think the president here will testify with me on that, that uh, we've had a really tough time since COVID, after COVID time. Um, in fact, I, I really, I always give me a thumbs up on the, in, during uh, COVID. I, I never thought we would play the Uganda Open in COVID, but thanks to him, how he did it, I don't know, but I know we played. <laughs> <laughs> the Open went on, the pros played, but since then, companies have been a bit late, not really laid back, but they have not been coming out really to, to support the local, uh, you know, local events. It's only picking up now again, but it's been tough for professional golfers in Uganda because we've been lacking lots of events. Without events, you cannot really judge your game because golf is about competition. So where there's no competition, there's no <coughs> way really even compete with those guys who are coming from wherever they are and they have been competing maybe in different events or in different countries like that. So it, that has been a challenge. For me, uh, given competitions, even if it is once a month or two weeks, after every two weeks, even now, I'm sure he's seen it. We have had uh, quite a number of events this year since the year began and the scores have been improving by event. So meaning we just need more events and then we'll be ready for any kind of competition. Okay. Um, I have a personal opinion of golf being one of the most organized federations that we have in Uganda. And I, I think I'll direct this to Deo first before Mr. President can jump in. Can you give us a status on UPGA? What you feel you've done great and where you feel you can do better? Uh, I think... Uh, like you've said, uh, golf is a very organized federation. And when you talk about a federation from the top, which is at the union level where he's been a president, and UPGA falls under mm -hmm. Uganda Golf Union. So once up is organized, means all the other associations below it are organized, like the ladies union, the seniors. <coughs> we've been all there. We have not had any issues. I, I think if we can say it on national t television <laughs> that a pro has done this, a pro has done that. So we've been really... Uh, following the footsteps <coughs> of the, the bigger body and whatever they tell us to do is what we do. And that has really kept golf as uh, a body uh, one of the best. And I think we've been winning awards e every year and I don't see any federation even coming to challenge, you, I mean, uh, you're going to go for union. Mm. <laughs> I don't see it either. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> well, um, first just allow me to rush a little bit on, on Akena. Uh, Regan Regan has improved a lot. 
um, I saw him when he could, you know, in, in Tokyo, Japan, where he couldn't. I asked him, I said, what went wrong? And he said, I don't know. And I said, Regan, if you are playing as a national team and you played your heart out today and you got the results that you got and I asked you what happened and you don't know, who should know? The Reagan I saw in the Open uh, the week that passed is totally a different reason. I want to attribute this to several things. One, the sport, the game of golf. That's how it's structured. It's discipline, it's independence, it's honesty. It's a game you play alone against the course and you get annoyed, you get happy, and you will come back the following day to challenge what you did yesterday. So I have seen a different Akena go. What I advise him to do is first, let him complete education. Let him play golf, complete education. After his education, the level of <coughs> comprehension of his game and participation and whatever this means in life is totally different from anybody else doing it without education. That's number one. Number two, they, they can sport. Time is going to come when he cannot compete due to age, due to anything. He must have another career or competences that can allow him within golf, like my brother Leo here, <coughs> he's able to do things some people cannot do. He can teach, he can educate, he can manage, he can administer, he can be a president of the union from athlete to president. Without doubt, he has all the competences, and this is exactly what education does. So one thing at a time, and <coughs> all achieved to greater heights. But um, coming to the idea, you know, everything they will say is, is true. The other thing he didn't mention is that starting from around 2014, of course later hit by COVID, there has also been, Uganda is the pioneer. We championed opening up competition to the region. Even Kenyans, it took them long to open, even up to now, Magical Kenya opened, they've not fully opened. They give one sort to Uganda, right? Mm. The Open, which is Uganda Open, which is the highest paying event in terms of safari tour events, we open to, we're not limited to any number. From South Africa, Kenya, they come in numbers, in tens. So the competition was widened and we allowed a lot of players. What we intended, the objective was that <coughs> if the locals, the local professionals face this tough competition at home, it enables them from time to time to up their game, <coughs> get used to this tough competition, and when they get chances that Deo has got and many others, they are able to face the competition levels that they practice back home. So at first it looks like we're not being selfish, inward thinking, but the long shot of it is that you get to learn to get the experience from your very own event. Mm -hmm. And subsequently it's paying off. Deo has played um, uh, events in Kenya Magical Open, Rugumai saw what he's doing. That is because he gets hardened by having taken part of this competition against the best. And when he meets them in Kenya, same guys. He says that, that the, 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 the skill show. So this has been the thing. Now, golf is one of the sports that has the highest number of rules, first, in its setup. It's one game that is played on a large space that is green, but in the rules, even the leaves that are hung on the tree, <coughs> if you <coughs> break one, golf will punish you. There's a penalty for that. Wow. If you just swing your club and hit a leaf and it falls down, a leaf, mm. you'll be penalized. That's a one-stroke penalty, right? In when you're practicing to hit your to hit your ball. So you can imagine the the it is structured along all facets of discipline. And this has enabled just from club level to individual players, to artisans, to everybody, to respect nature, to respect one another. And, and therefore, you know, when it comes to governance, it just falls under the same rules and, and, and procedures. So this is the nature of golf. Uh, by default, you ought to come, serve, leave, and let others serve. You have to respect. You are not alone in this game. You are there because of others. That's what golf embraces. So we have no doubt, and just to <coughs> confirm what they were said without causing a fight against our <laughs> brother and sister federations, it's going to be too tough if you want to challenge golf. 
But you can learn from what Uganda Golf Union is doing, the inclusivity. We have juniors, we have seniors, we have, because it's never too early to join golf, it's never too late to join golf. So we have juniors, ladies, seniors, professionals, which is the epic of this game. Because after that, then you come back to, to amateur or leisure golf or pleasure, uh, playing golf for pleasure. And then you have the amateurs. These are the skill type within the amateur. So that inclusivity, that setup, is so fortified <coughs> in, terms of, in terms of respect, in terms of professionalism, that it, it is very hard to beat. You can learn from golf. We are open. We're always open. And uh, we'd like to see everybody conform to those standards, and then we live in a, in a better sports uh, world. Yeah. When I always get asked, <coughs> I've been invited by Doreen Messages multiple times to play golf, and I tell her, the beauty about golf is I can postpone it and say I'll play in 10 years, and I'll still find the game, <laughs> and it will still appeal to me. So wonderful. Dale, uh, last year during the Open, you didn't manage to win the Open, and it disappointed, I know, not just you, but the fans that were there supporting you. Have you healed from that, heading into the climax of the Open tomorrow? Okay, <coughs> let me correct you on that. Last year, I did not play the Open. I had an injury just a month, a few weeks of the Open, which kept me away completely. Mm. And actually, it's been a struggle. I've been away I last from August last year. I think I first hit a golf ball in Kigali when I went with the parliamentary team that I trained for East African Games. That's when I tried to hit a golf ball. Then I came back. I tried again. The pain was still there, but... In the last two months, I've been able to pick up a bit. I'm not 100% fit, but uh, at least uh, thanks to um, my trainer, Coach Eddie, he's taken me through a number of drills that actually I've been able to strengthen my left hip, which had uh, an issue. And also I've been having some therapy from Activate Your Body Therapy. So I've been working basically on my fitness because hitting a golf ball, it's something I've done for the rest of my life. So I've been just <coughs> praying to get myself to a certain level of fitness so that I'm able to, to sustain myself when I'm on a golf course, which I think I'm almost getting there. Mm -hmm. But for this year, definitely I'm not going to be sitting. I'm on, when, I go to, when I get on a golf course, it's, it's, a, it's not business as usual. Of, it's serious business. So I'm, I'm going out there to try and give myself a chance to shoot as low as I can on the golf course. I'm not playing anybody, but I'm just going to fight with the entire golf course. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are your targets uh, as you tee off tomorrow? Well, <coughs> considering the conditions on the golf course, it's going to be a tough. It's going to be tough out there. Looking at the amateur uh, scores, the winner won on plus plus two. Plus two. Yeah, plus two. Uh, for pros, if it doesn't rain. I'm not seeing double digits in terms of under par. Probably the winner may, if he plays so well, maybe maybe pro, maybe minus eight, minus seven, around that figure. So that's the target I'm giving myself. That if I can shoot that uh, that score in four days, if I win, well and good. If I don't, I'll still be happy with myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which other Ugandan golfers are you confident in heading into the Open? Uh, heading to the Open, uh, looking at Entebbe locally. Uh, there's a young man called David Kamalindo. I think he's been really posting good scores. Mm. Um, uh, he's been doing very well. Uh, then, of course, uh, Ronald Lugmayo. He's been out there. He came back from South Africa. He's also around. And uh, back in Kampala, we have the likes of Gaita Rodel. We have Kasango Grace, who just won the last local event we had. So there, there are lots of uh, uh, local players who have, been, who have actually upped their game. So don't be, don't be surprised when... Uh, you see names that you have never seen actually up in the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's been some research done, Mr. President, that says beautiful courses like Chigo are priced out of range for professional golfers. What are your thoughts on that? <coughs> I, um, I, I can just condemn it as circumstance, but uh, I don't think that it is true that they've been overpriced. Because to develop a golf course is... is, is quite something that we can't talk about here, and especially a Lynx uh, golf course like uh, Lake Victoria Serena, which is one of the most magnificent uh, golf facilities in Eastern Central Africa. 
So certainly can most people afford? Maybe not. But would I say that it is out of range in, 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 in as far as the facility is concerned? No. And um, uh, Lake Victoria Center has come up with certain initiatives that, that encourage. For instance, juniors can train for free. The professionals have a day or two every week. No, it's open. <coughs> Yeah, so, so the professionals, as you can see, the professionals have access, full, free access to the course, mm -hmm. except they have to pay for the caddies, the bank carriers, you know, it's some sort of employment, because that's who, how we work in golf. Uh, the seniors have a Thursday, every day in a week on Thursday, when they are given concessional rate. They don't have to be members. They come from anywhere, they're seniors, they play. Ladies, it's the same thing. There's been these promotional... Uh, rates where, you know, during Christmas, they're cut down to what's manageable. So I think that the statement is not true, uh, but true to the fact, golf is not very cheap. It's, it's just like you say, golf is too expensive. No, you can get clubs that are cheap, you can get used clubs, but if you want to talk as this is the newest set of clubs, you have to spend a bit of money. So it is expensive, but not prohibitive. And... Uh, this course, Lake Victoria Center, is a member to the Golf Union, and they've had quite wonderful conversation with us. They're open to discussions. They're uh, fully paid affiliates of the, of the union. Uh, I think it would be unfair to say they're prohibitive expensive. Mm -hmm. But for to walk in every day, yeah, there might be uh, afford affordability issues. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was the chairman of the UPG, <coughs> we see he has sent so many poor golfers. Do we envision a time coming soon where uh, we'll have many Ugandan golfers also going for the Safari Tour tournaments in Kenya? Uh, <coughs> you know, Uganda Open, whenever I talk to Kenyans, they call Uganda Open, Kenya Open. <laughs> it's, it's, that's the statement they give me. And the reason they say that, they tell you that the magical Kenya Open, 90% of the players who play in the magical open, Kenya Open is from Europe. Mm. So for them, they don't see that as their local event because it's an international event. So they actually enjoy when they come for Uganda Open, which they actually recognize as their own event within the region. So they are also open to us. The Safari Tour is open to all Ugandans. Sometimes I think what limits some of the the local pros is uh, the cost involved, you know, traveling to Kenya, staying in Kenya for, you know, because sometimes those events are back to back, which maybe you can even stay there for like a, a whole month. You are traveling to Mombasa, back to Nairobi, then within Nairobi. So they are not restricting us from playing in a safari tour because already the, we own the biggest event in the safari tour. So how can they restrict us? The only challenge that we've had and the only fight we still have with them is we host safari tour events, the biggest safari tour events. How do they uh, make us compete for two slots? Actually, I even the slot you're talking about is not really given to us. Once yeah, in a while is when they throw it to us. Yes. But we compete for two slots. <coughs> we are regarded as international players when we're in Nairobi for the Magical Kenya Open. So you find Kenya takes about 10 uh, spots or slots in the Magical Kenya Open. And the other two are competed by anybody. We outside Kenya. So we feel it's not fair to us. And it's something that we've been fighting for. We are discussing each and every year. Hopefully one year, maybe uh, in the future, they will realize that, you know, Uganda should be given their own, even if it is one slot, it's good enough. At least we know we are competing for this very one. Mm -hmm. But the year, the year might come where Zimbabweans or Nigerians will take up the two slots, meaning we shall not have a representation what, in the magical Kenya Open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... Kenyans are always welcome to Uganda. I mean, it's not just in golf as a sport, even in business, you know how Uganda is open to mm. our neighbors. Mm. Yeah. You have voted the most hospitable country, country. in <laughs> Africa. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think um, that the, the, these are conversations that are continuing. Um, when I look at Magical Kenya Open 1, remember it's a DP tour. Yeah. So uh, Kenya, like any other country on this one, might not even have 10% control of what is yeah. happening, <coughs> which is wrong. But something good has been happening on the African side in terms of golf, <coughs> particularly Uganda. The current president of Africa Golf Confederation is Uganda. Mm -hmm. Now, 
he has been having conversations with Mr. Patrick Oba, who is the, the tournament director for Magical Kenya Open. And at first, it, the attention was not there, but it's beginning to capture his attention and conversations are continuing that might see in the future where there's opening up. Now, Uganda is not sitting. We are having very close co conversations on hosting a tour event, a DP tour event here in Uganda. Now, when that happens and, and government is listening, everybody is listening, the, I can say that we're at about 90% close that. Uh, my colleague, who's the current president, Dr. Jackson, where is leading that, and the trustees. So when that happens, then we might have a position where to leverage on Kenya and say, if you want to continue doing that, we can just reciprocate and we also give you one. We don't want to do that. How about we all increase on what we give <coughs> and what we take? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a conversation in motion. Um, it has take uh, strong bargaining. Well, I think once we have the DP tour, we'll have a strong bargaining power. And even if we don't win on that, uh, on, on that front, at least we'll have a tour that Ugandans here can fully, Ugandan professionals can fully compete for. Mm -hmm. What we cannot stop is the moment you call it DP tour, uh, USDA, whatever it comes out to be, Sunshine tour, then the power is in hands of different people mm -hmm. who sponsor these kind of games. So you will always have 90%, 75% uh, players coming from international, Europe, America, or where to come and participate in this. But the fact that we have that tour here, the fact that we have Ugandans giving it a shot and East African is a very good thing in itself. And <coughs> it's not surprising that last year we saw Gumaya take that stride. Uh, this year it could be Dewa Kope, mm -hmm. we have the Otires, we have the Marvin Chiviriges, we have very young talent in the professional category that we think that they are potential competitors in these tours at whatever level they are. So it's a good thing happening. Wonderful. The yeah. We is take the lessons. We, we don't take the losses. We take the lessons. Wonderful. Yes. Well, we are concluding our interview at Dewo. You're now getting back into, of course, the Open. You're teeing off tomorrow. Just a final word, you, a couple of promises you'd like to make to the people that will come watch you, that rally behind you. Uh, <coughs> to the fans out there, one thing uh, it's a request that let people come in big numbers mm. to support the local players especially. But, you know, we Ugandans, we w golf fans, especially Ugandan fans that have watched out there, are not looking out just to support only the local people. What I know what fans do is they come out to applaud those good shots that are going to be displayed by the professionals out there. No, it doesn't matter whether it's a Ugandan playing well or a Tanzanian playing well. Golf is golf. Golf is a family. Mm. So they, there's no bad blood in golf. For us, even after a round of golf, you hug, you shake your hands and all that. So it's for us, we appreciate a good round of golf. We appreciate good shots. So it doesn't matter where they come from. But of course, still, a Ugandan will always be a Ugandan wanting his or her own to, to take the, the, the big chunk of that money. But of course, it's, it's going to be a, a tough competition, like uh, President said. We have uh, really tough players out there this, this mm -hmm. year around. Uh, this morning when I was coming to the studio, uh, you know, Denmo, yes. Denmo who came second in the, in the Zambian, he's, he's Zambian, but he came second in the Zambian Open, which is a big event in the Sunshine yes. Tour. Yeah. He just Sunshine arrived last Zambian. night and he was calling me to sign in. <coughs> so we have the, the evergreen man, uh, Dismas Indiza is already in town. Yes. Robinson Chinoy, I'm happy that he's also back this time around. Mm. Of course, we have uh, Rugmayo, Kivirigi, all the other guys. So it's going to be very, very interesting out there. So let people come and see how golf is really played. Leave alone uh, when Presida is playing with his colleagues, uh, you won't see much. <laughs> 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 you won't see, but, but now, starting tomorrow, the real shots are going to be seen on a golf course. So we call you, even you yourself, come on, the, at least on the final day. Absolutely, I'll be there. Yeah, come I'll on the final there. day. <laughs> mm. I'll be there. Yeah. Moses, you've seen me there. <laughs> yes, I've seen you yeah. there and I want to see you more. Yes. And on that note, um, I want to say thank you to NBA Sport, which is, uh, he has given a lot of um, uh, appearance and, and media coverage and, and awareness across the country and beyond uh, about this good sport of golf. 
uh, I would like also to appreciate other uh, sponsors. As you know, sports in Uganda, anywhere in the world, without the sponsorship, the likes of Johnny Walker, the likes of Absa Bank, and Pinnacle Security, mm -hmm. you, you can't go far. So we appreciate that. And I join voice, I add voice to their copy. Ladies and gentlemen out there, you want to be a golfer, you want to know about golf, you want to start, you started, come to NTV, watch how this game is played, you will enjoy. And don't forget, we have our favorite 19th hole where everybody can choose to be a winner. Mm -hmm. So you will enjoy yourself, listen to good music, have some drinks, and walk back home with lots and lots of, of fun and lessons learned. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you had that. Come to <coughs> numbers as, of course, the professional open tees off tomorrow. If you don't happen to go down there, then you can, of course, catch all the updates live on NBS Sport because we are proud broadcasters of everything golf. My name is Munira Bax. Good morning. And, of course, look out for more programming coming your way on NBS Sport.